Make sure you check out those videos. Out. You are not allowed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we are going to be revisiting the Voron 2.4 that we built at the end of last year. So for those of you who didn't see our build along, this is the machine that we did a four part series on. And obviously we thought that we would now revisit as the machine is near completed. <laughs> Basically, wanted to get this machine up, running, printing, ready to take with us to the Smurf event that happened in December of 2024 because we knew some of the attendees would be Voron engineers and the Voron team. We wanted to make sure that it was it was right and everything, we were happy with everything prior to going to the event. We attended the event, we got some very, very high compliments from the team and also got the machine serialised at the event by Voron themselves, win. So for those of you who aren't aware, this is the LDO Voron kit, the Revision D. It's a 2.4. This model is the 350 bill plate version. So just a little rundown on the specs. Now these aren't set in stone by any means. You have a bill plate of 350 millimeters by 350 millimeters, and I do believe that you can print 350 millimeters high, although the machine is higher, but due to the way that the gantry works and whatever else, that is your limiting factor. So it does have a big bill volume. Regarding maximum nozzle temperatures, bed temperatures, and whatever else, I've got this on the stock configuration. So the bill plate will max at 110 degrees. The nozzle will max at 300 degrees. That being said, you can edit your config file to allow you to put a high temperature hot end in this machine and you will be able to get up to 500 degrees if you choose. So it does give you huge scope to print with a wide range of materials with this because of the fact that it is purely open source. You can change whatever you want. It's all belt driven on linear rails, making it for a very, very smooth, nice, solid, reliable, platform. The quad gantry levelling is excellent. I've not had any problems with the quad gantry levelling. So in simple terms, what it does is it probes all four corners of the bed a number of times to take a measurement from each corner. It will then manually adjust the corners to make sure that your gantry and hot end are perfectly parallel to your build plate, giving you the perfect layer every single time. I haven't even had to implement bed meshing on this machine. If you wanted to add that, it's a macro and whatever else, you can certainly put it in. But I have printed on this full bed plate prints and I've not seen any issues with my first layer. Set the E offset, store it in the config file, forget it. Every print, it'll do the gantry level in and it'll print and it'll print right every time. The only thing we haven't fitted, which I probably should note, never more filter fan. That is still on the to-do list. I would recommend if you're going to be printing copious amounts of ABS that you definitely install that. We have all the components, I just haven't had the time yet to put it all together and, and plug it in. But everything's there and that fits basically under the bill plate at the front. But apart from that, we are golden. The machine that is Voron is golden. What more can I say? Component wise with this, the kit is shipped with the Leviathan mainboard, all of the hardware minus the Raspberry Pi. However, I think that will change. It comes with a Revo hot end, an LDO Nighthawk board, which is basically a CAN bus tool head board. Really simple and easy to fit. It's literally a USB straight from the tool head directly to your Pi. The Leviathan board does come pre-flash with clipper. You do get an example config file that allows you to comment out the version that you do not have. To get the printer up and running, even with very, very limited experience in clipper and config files is relatively easy. We do stock currently this version in the black and the space gray. We also stock the Trident in the black and the space gray. The build volume for the Trident models that we're carrying in stock currently is 300 mil. I think current range is space gray, black, purple and blue. So they will be going forward what we have in stock. So first of all, I will go over what we've actually done to the machine since the last video, which obviously if you haven't seen the last video, we will leave links to those in the description. So please be sure to go and 
check that out. We left the machine open. We have now fully enclosed the machine. We have also added a back plate with a PTFE tube to the stealth burner. And we have another part of PTFE tubing on the rear of the machine. This allows us now to print filament straight from a dry box or whatever and make it easy to feed. These are fitted basically with push fit unimatic connectors. We've also added web camera. This allows us to now remotely monitor the prints via mainsail. We have two strips of Cobb LED lighting which illuminate the cabinet gloriously. We've added a few extra little pieces. So now I have the nozzle scrubber brush fitted with a little purge bucket. I don't use the purge bucket, but I do use the nozzle scrub. I've set that on a start G-code macro in the slicer. So basically what the machine does now, prior to print, you send the file to the machine. The machine will preheat. It will, before it does its quad gantry leveling, scrub the nozzle, make sure that there's no loose bits of filament on there. It will then go and level the gantry, home itself, heat up to the correct temperature, starts printing. Bingo. That is pretty much where we're at. I'll be honest, I love it. This is the first ever Voron that I've built personally, apart from a conversion of a switch wire, which is slightly different. Scratch build, this is the first one. And to me, there is nothing comparable to it, really. It gives you so much flexibility in terms of tinkering with your configuration file printing at whatever speed you want to. I mean, typically I don't print with this quickly. I don't see the need to. I print at 300 millimeters a second with it as a rule, and that works out absolutely fine for me. I don't want to start pushing it into like the benchy speed challenges and all that type of thing, because to me, that wasn't the reason we built this machine. We built it because it was a good size build volume. It allows us to print with any filament type. It's reliable, it's well, put together and thought out. The components are second to none. All in all, it's it's a fantastic machine. And anybody that is in the market for something that they want to build themselves, evolve and whatever else, this is definitely a worthy consideration. So for those of you who aren't aware what Voron is and, and all of that, basically it was a team of engineers that got together, totally open source, charged no money at all, designed a range of printers that would allow anybody to make them from off-the-shelf components with a collaboration of printed parts. So manufacturers soon cottoned on. It's a very laborious task, self-sourcing individual components, which don't get me wrong, is quite possible. But reputable brands decided that they would make a pre-configured kit with all the hardware that you would need, minus the printed parts and a few other extras, to allow you to build these machines. It gives you total open source. There is never any fear that anything like this will ever get locked down so you're locked into an ecosystem. That is just not what the project is about. People are constantly adding new modifications, add-ons, so on. This machine will never go out of date because the second it does, it'll be a case of a modification. You add the modification, you're back up to date. It's really that simple. There's that many different variations, parts you can switch out. It's literally endless what you can actually do with this machine. Initially, it might feel like quite a hefty investment, but if you look at it long term, it really isn't. If you were going to use it for hobby, industrial, whatever, would ultimately pay for itself and earn its keep. You can see the footprint isn't huge. You could quite easily have this on a, a decent desk or a bench. It doesn't take up that much room. Everything's contained within the printer apart from the filament. We have printed everything on this from PLA to ABS, PETG in loads of different models. I've not had any real issues with the machine at all in terms of tweaking settings and whatever else. All I've done with it, I've gone through Orca Slicer, I've followed the calibration processes to make sure I'm getting the best flow for the material that I'm using. Everything else has pretty much been stock. I haven't really had to tweak temperatures or, or anything like that. I think that the, the most important thing to take into account is even though there are pre-configured profiles for different brands of filament in Orca Slicer, it's always worthwhile taking a little bit of time, and it doesn't take long, doing like your flow calibrations and stuff like that to make sure that you're getting the best from the filament. That's what you're aiming for. Other things to, to maybe mention, if you plan on using this machine to print with ABS or, or ASA, I would say that it's quite important from my experience to heat soak the chamber 
So what I mean by heat soak the chamber, before you actually start to print with the material, get the bed up to temperature and let it sit there. This basically allows the chamber to heat up to a decent ambient temperature. So when you actually start to print with your ABS or your ASA, you're less likely to get any warping or fail prints due to the chamber not being warm enough. As you can appreciate, this is a big area to try and heat. Some people recommend 50 degrees. I haven't started my prints at 50 degrees. I've probably waited until it gets to about 35, 40-ish. But by the time the print's well underway, it soon reaches 50 degrees. You have a thermistor, which will tell you the chamber temperature. So if you're using mainsail or fluid, it's there on screen. You can see what your chamber temperature is. I've flipped the mill plate over now and I'm printing on the smooth side. It's like a very satiny finish opposed to the heavy texture PEI coating on the other side. And I say I've not had any issues with anything sticking to that side of the build plate. Both work exceptionally well. We have already got inbound the LDO turtle box. So for those of you who don't know what the turtle box is, it is basically an AMS type unit that you print the parts out for, they supply all the hardware, you put it together and you will end up with a four colour, colour changing unit that plugs straight into the machine via the Raspberry Pi as far as I'm aware, via a USB cable, a little bit of a configuration to do for that, but then you've then got your Voron printing four colours. LDO tipped us off when we actually spoke to them about it, that the actual daisy chaining compatibility with these turtle box units is pretty much infinite. They said to put a number on it, it was around 162 units had been tested. So that's 162 lots of four times filament colour changing capability, as if you have that many filaments, but you never know. So when they arrive, we will be adding one of those to this machine, no doubt. We'll revisit this again. We'll, we'll do a build video. But ultimately, if you are considering this machine or the Trident machine, be sure to go and check the other series of videos because it's definitely a worthwhile watch. I know a lot of people feel a little bit intimidated or put off about building a machine, but honestly, it's quite a fun, enjoyable process. Once you've built it, the amount of satisfaction it gives you to actually see your creation alive and working is, is quite quite nice. It's definitely within the realms of anybody who's an accomplished 3D printer already and wanting to take that next step. It's not that big of an ordeal by any means. At the end of the day, if you purchase the kit from us, we're more than happy to help you if you encounter any problems, what any advice, recommendations or whatever going forward with, with assembly. Make sure you check out those series of videos because it'll give you a bit of a better insight into the unboxing, the assembly, what's involved, whatever else. But ultimately, I'm really, really pleased with this machine. We do stock, obviously, the 2.4 in various colours, along with a whole host of LDO accessories and separate components. Whether you wanted to build this machine in stages, you can buy the individual components, all the rest of it. And again, we do the Trident and there are other machines inbound from LDO because we have been that impressed with the quality of their kit products. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you do have any questions regarding this machine or any other machine that we sell, drop it in the comments below. We'll do our utmost to answer you as quickly as possible. I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.